Yeah. Oh, we're back. Think positive thoughts, people, and send us positive tweets. Because if you do, and you add the C-sharp corner and the Global AI community hashtag to it, you can win $50 gift card. And um, with that, thank you, Marion, for, for joining us again. And, um, Hello again. Yeah. You never left, did you? No. No. No, it was too interesting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, Seth, I'm, I'm happy you're here as well. Um, without you, I don't know how this episode would, would ever happen. <laughs> it probably would have been awesome, but less goofy. I am all about goofiness primarily because what other way is there to be? And they told me, Marion, that I have a half hour to talk to you. Oh, wow. About building models with computer vision. And as you know or may not know, I am a huge fan of computer vision. I started with NLP and then moved on to computer vision. So for those that don't know what computer vision is, why don't you describe the problem and then give us a sense for how you do it? All right. Well, um, maybe if you're a parent, right, you have kids and they want a specific kind of to, uh, toys, right? And you cannot keep up with all their main characters and favorite characters they want to have. So uh, what if you could just use pictures and the model tells you, all right, this is character one or B or C or whatever. Um, so basically it's to detect things. And in our case, uh, thanks to Hank, uh, Buhlmann, who made us a really nice uh, data set with the Simpsons uh, Lego, actually. I thought it was nice and also thinking about parents. I'm not a parent myself, but I do have two nieces and uh, sometimes they, they like to get specific stuff for their birthdays. And I thought, well, maybe this is a nice helping tool so you can recognize uh, characters. So you know when they ask for, uh, in this case, uh, Bart Simpson or Lisa Simpson, that you will come home with the right stuff. So, and um, yeah, if you don't want to make you know, a very complex model, you can use custom vision, which is basically using the pre-trained models from Microsoft and just use it as an interface. So you don't have to code, uh, you can just upload images. We will see that later on and you will get an answer back. So without programming, you get actually the answer. This is really cool. I mean, I literally had this problem the other day. I wanted, my, I really? wanted to know which Simpson my kid was playing with, no, I'm just kidding. But it is a useful problem yeah. and I love this example. I'm a huge fan of it. So should we dive in? Yeah, I think that's a nice idea. Do it. So I think that I um, should share my screen. So let's see what I can share with you. Can you make your font a little bit bigger by like maybe twice the size? Uh, well, this is not my screen actually, so. Oh, oh yeah, we need to go but to the other. This is, this. so. Yes. Perfect. Can you see something? I sure can. At least I can. It looks beautiful. So I see a bird and stuff. Okay, good. Now you see the right screen. Because I can't see the screen right now. So please let me know if I'm showing weird things. Uh, so what I show you is basically the landing page uh, for customvision.ai. It's um, one of the services where uh, you can actually use your own, own images train your own model, but based on already uh, pre-trained models from Microsoft, and then use it. So when let's say that the standard cognitive services are not enough for you, or you want something really specifically like, for example, I love dogs. Some people that know me maybe know the dog spotter I built, and Amy Boyd wrote a really nice tutorial for that too. Uh, but now we're going to focus on um, Simpsons. And yeah, of course, maybe Microsoft already trained their models also on the Simpsons, but you know, let's just assume they don't. So um, I'm going to talk you through this. If you uh, do want to do it at home, I wrote a blog about it. Uh, I think Willem will share the link to it. And I also have a GitHub repo, so you can just fork it and play with it. So let's just start with signing in. So my main problem is if I see an image from the Simpsons, I don't know who's who, right? So we want to get an answer to that. And in order to do so, we're going to build a model. And then with some test images, all coming from Hank, uh, we're going to test if we did the right thing. Now, 
Um, I will create a new project just to, to really talk you through everything. So we have to give it a name. We call it uh, Simpsons uh, demo. In this case, um, recognize the Simpsons, right? And then we come to these things. I'm not going to dive into the, the specific variables and settings. You can read that back, but we need a resource, of course. We have to run this on Azure, so we need some um, some resources. I created already a Simpsons one, but you have the option to create everything yourself. Now, we want to classify an image, so the model comes back with which character it is, so what class it is, and we use uh, images that have only one image per picture. I will show you that later on. And in this case, it retails pretty good and we do something basic, all right, just quick. There we go. And now we have our, basically our setup. So you can see just in a few clicks, we're done. And Hank has made a really nice website. It's a developer's guide to Azure AI and one of his uh, labs. Can you all see that actually? Is my screen sure sharing? Can. Good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Make it a little bit bigger. They want you to zoom in just to hear if that's okay. Exactly. So the second one is the custom vision one. It's a lab. You can also uh, build these one yourself, and you will find a nice link to the uh, the data set. So you will see this yourself. You have a Lego data set. Of course, I downloaded it already. So um, it's there. And I can show you that actually, I'm not sure whether that will be, you can't see my screen, I think. Well, don't worry. OK, so we go back. We can see the screen right there. Yeah, Good. one of them. Good. So and OK, and in order to train the model, of course, I have to tell the model what's what, right? Because I cannot just say, right, this is a picture, just give the answer, so you have to do something. And this is where you can add images, and you have to give it a name. Now, I downloaded everything already. I called it The Simpsons. We have the data, data set, and Hank already classified everything. So in this case, we're just going to do two, and I'll tell you how you can finish it later on. So from Bart Simpsons, we will use um, a few pictures. Now, at least 20, that would be really great. Actually, that's already enough. Um, but you don't want to use everything because you want to test it later on. And of course, you it's not fair when you train a model with an image and you show the same image. Yeah, of course, that's tricky. So let's say we just take uh, these and we save the last ones. We open them and then we have to say, all right, this is Bart Simpson. So I give it a tag. Okay, I upload them. And there we go. We have now... 36 images to learn the model how Bart Simpson looked like. And of course, we want another image. Now, Seth, which image do you want? I think I'm going to go with, of course, Krusty the Clown. All right, good. Okay. We go with Krusty. So the same. We want to save some test images. So we take the upper part of it and we say, this is Krusty. OK, there you go. OK, good, then we're done. And that's actually it regarding the data. Now we're ready to train the model. So we're going to train it. We do it quickly, of course, uh, because of the demo. Uh, yeah, here we have to wait a little while. Uh, just be patient. Not too much, hopefully. So while it's going, I'll ask you some questions. Yes, so sure. So basically, let me see if I understand correctly. You are building a model that is yeah. going to tell us whether or not an image that you give it is Krusty the Clown or Bart Simpson. Is, is exactly. that right? So the probability and, that's one of the two, yeah. Fantastic. Or, or then, none, hopefully. Or none, hopefully. Okay. Then the other question I have is um, once you've you've uploaded these images, like I'm trying to understand, is there code you have to write to get any of this to work? No, not at all. Microsoft have done it already for you. Uh, because you're, they already created a deep learning model, and you don't have to bother about that. I see. And so that's so the nice part. Can you give us a sense for what's actually going on in the background? In the background, well, it's chunking up the image into little pixels, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And let's see it like a sort of library where Microsoft has already recognized specific things. So in this case, you're basically uh, pixelize all your Bart Simpson's images, and um, then, yeah, then you're sort of comparing it, if 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 that's a way to explain it. And then the, the but of course in a in a more uh, advanced way than just a human eye, I would say. Got it. Because, so because you you we cannot not you know we can see a lot of pictures and then you know remember it, but of course a model can store it. Yeah. Okay. So basically what it's doing is it's going through some process right now where it's looking at these pictures, some looking, I, I'm putting an air quote, obviously computers don't have eyes. It's yeah, going but, but look at the, looking at the picture and store it like, hey, this is Bart. And Bart from all kind of angles mm -hmm. and maybe different outfits or in this case we have the same outfit, but he just learns how Bart looks like. I see. And then that way, like if you want to, and then if you want to project this to like a, a business use case, you might have a situation like on a sh show floor or something where you want to be able to recognize where your products are, for example. Would that exactly. be a, I see. What or think you about a, 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 um, uh, an, a machine, for example, that has uh, different spare parts and you want to know which part is broken. So, for example, a person who's working on that can take a picture and he knows, right, I have to replace this part. Um, also, those practical things are very handy. Fantastic. And so for, for those that want to get started with this, it's literally just create a custom, have an account, and then literally just go through the clicking that you did. Have you used this for anything other than Bart Simpson, or have you seen or have any ideas on how people could use this? In yeah, well, I, I really used it for dogs, because uh, the nice thing is that um, you can wrap it up and build a, build a small app around it. So you have power apps and you have flow. So basically what you do, you build a simple app and you can take pictures. And um, what I did is just you know, taking pictures of dogs and of course train the model, but also taking real life pictures and using it on my own dogs. And that was pretty fun. Well, that's but fun. I know also there's also a business case. I, I, I can't tell you what, but then they're using this as, as well. Got it. So yes, yeah. that's awesome. All right, so uh, and, looks like it's done. Yeah, we're done. And, and the good news, yeah, and of course this is sort of perfect right um it, the model is very precise so it can tell you very well whether um some image is crusty or not or bart simpsons or not so both crusty and bart are well represented you can see that under here right this part um so actually this is sort of your perfect model and of course you want to test the model right mm -hmm. Okay, well, actually, now we can do a quick test, but you have to close your eyes, actually. Well, can you? I mean, yeah, you will see the image. So I have to get an image. I can just browse a local file and uh, 